morning, friends. Well, it's morning here at Wild Cottage, up in the hills of County Clare in Ireland. Oh, we have dog nose. Both of them are here. Shep and Mimi are both here, but I'm sat in a chair because the grass is still wet. Some frosty bits still in the shade. And it's a beautiful blue sky here. And I'm just sat right behind the cottage where we have some of the bird feeders. So I'm hoping you can see them flitting back and forth and, and hear them as well. I thought I'd just start the podcast outside anyway before the sun hits me because it's just such a beautiful day. So I've wrapped up in my woolies and uh, yeah, I'll show, I'll tell you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing one of my favorite cowls. Uh, this is the Forest Floor Cow by Gabrielle Matthews and it's a pattern available on Rab Ravelry, paid for pattern. And um, I've made it out of uh, Gideon yarns, and they're two sisters who are indie dyers up in Northern Ireland. And it was last uh, 2020, I got their DK Weight Advent calendar, absolutely spectacular. And I've used three minis in this cowl, and it has a split in it so you can kind of style it different ways. And I could have added another mini and made it longer, but I did it like this. I think I'm going to make this again. It's a it's a nice little stitch pattern in it. It's not complicated. I really enjoy it. And then I have my grandmother oak shawl on, which is made out of all Irish fibers. Um, most of them are hand spun, some hand spun by me. It's Irish wool and Irish alpaca. And I dyed th these bits with the oak leaves. Um, that I gathered on the winter solstice last year, not last year, 2020. Um, yeah, up from Grandmother Oak up here. So that was really lovely. And then my jumper is from, I think it's called Fisherman's something. It's handmade in Donegal, but it is, um, it's not handmade. I'm sorry. It's made in Donegal. I'm, I'm sure it's machine made. Uh, and it is merino, so it's not Irish wool because merinos don't do well in Ireland at all. So, But it's very cozy. It's split down the side because I wore it all the time and I did some mending on it with some of my hand spun. And then my little mitts are Irish uh, alpaca, sp hand spun and knitted by Sabine of Back to the Source yarns. And she also sells her mitts and her yarns over at Irish Fiber Crafters. And yeah, so, uh, and my jumper I got at Hanley Woolen Mills in County Tipperary. So yeah, and all these fibers, I, I yarns and fibers I got at Irish Fiber Crafters. So I did not tell you who I was once again. <laughs> so my name is Susan. I live here at Wild Cottage on the, in the hills of County Clare in the west of Ireland where say about 20 miles from the coast as the crow flies and uh, I live here with my partner Tom, our two rescue dogs uh, Shep and Mimi and a whole lot of wildlife and uh, yeah so I am a knitter, a spinner, I do natural dyeing. I have a, a natural dyes garden here so the, like my aim is to natural dye with plants that I've actually grown in our dye garden or sustainably foraged around here. The natural dyes garden here is also used as a teaching tool. So um, when Sandra runs her natural dye workshops through Irish Fiber Crafters, you know, all things being equal and it's not like a terrible storm or something, you come here to the natural dyes garden and you can pick from the plants. And also we talk about sustainably foraging, also growing. Um, with biodiversity and soil health in mind, uh, no dig, etc. But anyway, so you will pick your plants here and then you go off and you do the natural dyeing with Sandra who does a whole lot of natural dyeing. She's been doing it longer than I have. And I also, I'm, I suppose I'm multi-craftual. And in 2022, I want to make certain I really get back into my crafts. So I enjoy, I'm, I'm a beginner for sure. In uh, like needlework so cross stitch and embroidery um, I'm starting to do sort of like a scrap booky art journal thing um, yeah and also I have a sewing machine from Santa which I really want to use to learn to sew as well and to further learn again I'm a beginning crocheter and also I'm I uh, want I've been making some stitch markers for myself 
and I want to progress now into using forged materials from here and perhaps sometimes on the seashore to make not they're not for sale just for myself and I'm if I am able to make them decently I'll probably put some in with prizes I, because I like to use them as well for earrings so I just have a simple little hoop that I can slide I don't know if that's showing up but uh, these are stitch markers from Nicole of Time Weaver and she sells her stitch markers and I believe the one I have on is Jade and Amethyst I think but I can't remember because I can't see it at the moment anyhow so yeah I like the fact that those sort of things are you know have dual purpose knitting jewelry and body jewelry so that's fun um I'm sure I've forgotten some things but anyway so yeah so but I just want to show you something right now because I need your help. So if you had watched my vlogmas at all, you might have seen that I was knitting Tom some socks and um, it was going, it went really well and he loved the socks and they fit fantastically. I just did a vanilla sock with the shadow wrap heel that Denise of Earth Tones Girls has, has a wonderful um, tutorial on in her channel and then I did the spiral toe which I again Rox knits uh, Roxanne Richardson on her channel is I'm sorry I'm just being distracted by all the birds there's a hawthorn tree behind you and it still has some red berries and the birds are in there there's a robin and I see a great tit and a cool tit and they're they're just hanging out there and of course they're all around us here too anyways um totally lost my train of thought. So anyway, so that's what I did. But the thing was, is that when he wore it, so he has sensory sensitivity. So Tom's an Aspie. And so certain things he's got heightened, heightened sensitivity to. And he could feel those pearl bumps, uh, even though the wool was, you know, it was just a typical sock yarn. Uh, it was hand dyed by Gideon Yarns, but it was just, a, you know, a merino and nylon. So it was soft probably not the strongest sock yarn. I mean, as we know, Merino is a soft yarn and it's lovely, but it's not going to necessarily be as long lasting. Uh, this is something I'll speak about because I'm doing the sock spin along with Carry of My Wool Mitten. Uh, that will come later on. I'll talk about that and uh, give you a link to her channel. So and I talk about, um, I will put the links down below. So unless you're on the telly, I think in every other sort of device you can click a little there's like a little arrow right underneath the video and the description box will open up and I will put links in there and if I forget anything do just leave a comment and I will um, remember that, remind me that I've forgotten something and I will stick it up there or if you have a question about anything put that there in the comments and I'll try to answer you and if I don't know the answer I will try to point you towards the direction of someone that does know the answer. If you were watching Vlogmas, you may remember that I was knitting a very, well, I think very fun and beautiful jumper called the Stay Pull Sweater by Park Williams. And it's a bulky weight pattern, but what's really fun about it is in the pattern, she gives you all different sort of combinations to help you make a bulky yarn from what you might have in stash. So I went through my stash and I picked out a bunch of Christmas colorways that I had and or ones that were sparkly or just seemed vibrant. And so I've been knitting that up and it's been going really well. And, uh, and I've been just holding all the colors together. Uh, the base color has been sort of a teal green, a sort of a Christmas tree green that I got at Goodwill uh, held with um, some beautiful farm yarns from the Flock website, which is uh, Melissa of Knitting the Stash podcast. That's her website where she sells small, small farm yarns. And actually her latest video, and I'll link that as well, she talks about how to source small farm yarns. Obviously she's talking, you know, she's in the U.S. Um, so that's a lot of the things are going to apply there, but that's, that's, um, could be really handy for you but I got three different colorways and a really vibrant and beautiful and so there was started off with sort of the purpley yeah I think it was hyacinth and then I went into 
this teal green and then I went into a blue and I held it with a lot of other yarns and I'll actually link to I'll see if I can find the video where I talk about it more and I can link to it anyway so really fun to knit really enjoying it and then I went and I did my first sleeve all excited and then I went and I you know picked up stitches and started knitting for my second sleeve and I've done something that this is where I need your help because I don't know how I did this so basically I've started knitting I knitted it in reverse stockinette and I don't know how I did that so like I did some YouTubing you know to see about reverse stockinette because it's never it's never it's not anything I've done although I want to do that for Tom's socks because again that was on the vlogmas I got a lot of help from you guys with ideas so that the pearl bumps wouldn't bother him on in his socks and so I can just turn them inside out and I can do reverse stockinette so I did some YouTube searches at that point and I was trying to do reverse stockinette and I couldn't seem to make that happen you know knitting in the round and I only found one video where they were talking about it and it seemed so easy but it just wasn't working for me and now I've done it by an accident and I wish I understood better as I don't really understand knitting and a lot of things so I don't I'm just sort of my brain doesn't work that way so well and also I have this funny thing where so I'm right-handed but I'm left eye dominant so um, I had one of these big workups and she said that that was pretty unusual she noticed it it was her area of interest because um, she was also that way and she's like you know do you have a hard time watching something and then being able to do it back and I have throughout my whole life like I'm desperate at that although you know learning by watching is something I like to do and very 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 helpful but I have to watch things like way more than <laughs> most people before I can get it to work so so that's all I mean there were so many tears when I tried to learn to knit I literally took me months to master the knit and pearl I was but I just so if, if you have that problem as well keep at it because you will finally get it and it's so worth it anyhow so I don't know how I've done Imagining this I'm I... gonna have to unravel but I want to make sure I don't do it again like because anyway so help has anyone done this how do you do that by an accident and then how do I do it on purpose on my sock um, when I want to make a sock for Tom you know can I because what I was trying to do after having knit the cuff and all and then what I wanted to do then was for the heel is mainly for the ball of the foot to knit it reverse stockinette and then what I was, saw online they were kind of saying oh you flip it inside out and but that didn't do anything but this is done something anyways okay so I'm probably rambling so help is very very appreciated and this one I hope you've been enjoying the birds and I really apologize for my rambliness and I don't know what all you can hear I don't know if you could hear that rook and there's right here from here where you, where you can't see there's a robin there's a great tit there's a blue tit can you hear their wings flapping as they fly around fly in and out and uh, I hear a magpie back there too somewhere in the forest but uh, I'm sure you can see all these little ones I can see the movement but I can't see what they are but they look like little tits of some sort but there's probably shaft inches and who knows what okay anyways I'm gonna um, pause here and go back in and thank you for tolerating what a mess this is and of course I've forgotten to say again <laughs> we've had a lot of new subscribers and you're so very welcome and thank you so much for subscribing I hope you do enjoy the, the videos and you're very welcome here and of course to all the returning viewers thank you and welcome back again you know you do our heart good watching the video and you know leaving the lovely comments or clicking the like button 
are just watching it. Oh, and this is the thing I should say too. There so. are ads at the end of the video only. That's the way I've set it up because I don't really like ads, but you, we kind of have to do them now. Our YouTube just puts them wherever they want. So my ads are at the end of the video and they're skippable. And because they're at the end of the video and skippable, I make very little income of it. And so I started, I got to the point where I had to do ads and I, so I did them starting July and you can't get your first check until you have at least a hundred euros in credit or earnings. And I'm not at that point yet. Um, so like last month I made the most ever in the, you know, six months that it had been running because of Vlogmas and it was about 23 euros. <laughs> so if you want to support the channel, all you have to do is just watch those ads at the end and basically what that money will do whenever I can get it. <laughs> It'll just help pay me back or support when I, you know, buy gifts to give away as prizes and also for the shipping because all my, my prizes are eligible to everyone everywhere. Um, so yeah, um, so that's a little bit about the ads. <laughs> Oh, there's my best buddies, two of them. Yes. So we've come. Yeah. We've come in. Stop. We've come inside now and we're in my craft room, which is in the process of even more creative organization, which is my word for 2022, my words. And I will probably talk about that a bit more in a separate video. But now I just want to show you a little bit about um, the spinning for socks, some yarns that I've spun, and just a little bit about the knitting journal from November Woods and a new book I've gotten. And I think the two of those, I'll also do a little dedicated short video, but we'll just give you a quick look. And I'm also going to tell you the winner, announce the winner of the prize for the November Woods yarn. So if you remember the podcast 15, we were doing a giveaway for this lovely uh, naturally dyed November Woods Fiber Company yarn. It's a fingering weight. It's on a base. She's changed the base a little bit, but this is the birch base. It's very soft. It's a non-super wash. And the colorway is Lilac Grove. And then a handmade little dragonfly from Sandra Marshall, who is Fru Bells at Irish Fiber Crafters. So I thought they were really cute together and yeah. So I have done the comment picker and the winner is Maureen Smith. So Maureen, if you will contact me at wildcottagepodcast at gmail.com and give me your postal address, I can send this out to you. Congratulations. I think you're really going to enjoy it. And I'll just say as well, um, the little dragonflies, I've made some as well. They're really fun to make. Sandra taught workshop up at Irish Fiber Crafters, which I did. And she's also got it online there as well. And it's really fun. And, you know, yeah. Kid, older kids can do it as well. Um, it takes a wee while if you're going to do all the different embellishments. But it is, yeah, it's worth checking out anyway. So, all righty. Congratulations, Maureen. This section, I'm going to talk a bit of about my spinning for socks and the sock spin along and where I am in it and how I've changed my mind about a few things and I'll just quickly show you I'm going to make a dedicated podcast talking about this lovely um, knitting reflects and left reflections and dreams uh, workbook journal by November Woods Fiber Company and also her new one which I'll download and print out these are free and um, I'll have a look at that and I'll share that with you. And also, I just got this book, Knitting for Radical Self-Care, A Modern Guide by Brandy Cheyenne Harper. And I've had a look through it. It's really lovely patterns I'm excited about making. And it also goes through about sort of like how to knit and do different things. So it's very good, you know, for, for beginners and all. Um, to really get you started. But what I'm excited about is that it's actually showing you, you know, some step-by-step -step pictures for knitting with DPNs 
with three DPNs together because I think that's what I'm going to need to do. I've never done it before. I'm making these um, lovely mitts. It's the Elhaz Rune mitts from um, Ellie at Curio Stitches and it's her pattern and you have a thumb gusset and I've never done that before and I want to see about doing it on DPNs. I guess I can magic loop it. But anyways, I'm going to investigate that. And um, as I was talking earlier about sometimes, yeah, I have a hard time translating what I see into what to do with my hands. There's like some kind of disconnect there. So I'll look at the pictures there and read the words and that might help me. Um, but yeah, we'll see. If you recognize this yarn, it's because it's from the shortbread sock sets from Gideon Yarns that I made Tom's socks out of and of course I had some left over so I'm going to make my mitts with it and also with this pattern you, you can do some beading which is another thing I've never done so I'm going to try that so it's a few of my aims for 2022 was to do some of those new things. Anyhow also I wanted to say to you because I talked in my last knitting vlog about how I've I'm not I frogged I'm not continuing on with my MCAL, my Stephen West MCAL, but I got these little labels uh, with the kit that I bought, and I think I have two. And so if anyone did do the MCAL and they didn't get the labels, if you would like some, please just leave a comment there and I'll be happy to send them to you. Or you can just, again, you can email me at wildcottagepodcast at gmail.com. Okay, so that was just a little things that'll be taster for a different video I want to talk about. But now let's talk a little bit about some of the yarns. So first off, I had I am spinning on an electric spinner and I'm going to insert some footage. Hello, it's editing Susan here. And I realized that I have a lot of footage of me getting the fiber and doing different things that... I really would like to share and it's going to make this video too long so I'm going to make my spinning for socks video separate because not everyone is going to be interested in spinning as well so I'm going to make that separately over the next couple of days so that hopefully is going to be the very next video that comes up on the channel um, possibly this weekend okay so prizes new giveaway so in my last, I think it was my knitting vlog there, or maybe one of the vlogmas, I can't remember, but I, oh yeah, I took you up to Irish Fiber Crafters and I bought a few things for giveaways. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll do a giveaway this podcast. One, there's going to be two different prizes. One is going to be this set here with the naturally dyed wool from your wool. And she dies here in Ireland. This is the set called The Winter Flower. And it is, I believe, yes, 100% Corydale. And it's fingering, non-superwash. So we have three minis. Just some cute little rainbow sticky notes that I picked up. I thought they were really cute. And my friend Susanna's Varplus Ireland, her calendar for 2022. Now, I know today is July. July? No, it's not. <laughs> January 12th so it's a bit late but sure better late than never and it has if you follow her you know farm twitter she she has this flock of smart blossoms and she uses the wool to for yarn alpaca her alpacas for yarn and they're sold at Irish Fiber Crafters and she does her blankets and they are just amazing and she uses a local mill to spin the wool in County Kilkenny Cushendale Woolen Mill so I have and I bought these calendars as well and um, these are to give away and then I have another set to give away with the calendar and then this is some of the Belclare breed wool this is an Irish breed it's an it's a more modern Irish breed and I got this went up and bought this at Irish Fiber Crafters as well and it is dyed by Sandra with the alfalfa slash olive color so I don't think it's naturally dyed I think it's maybe dyed with alfalfa and then over dyed with the olive color wait I'm, I'm not actually certain so anyways but it is 80 meters for 100 grams so I think that's like Aaron weight and it's it's a rustic wool but it's soft 
I think it's soft enough. Like it's not scratchy. It's not merino. So it's not like this. It is a rustic wool, but it's very, it's quite nice. And then I have a little stitch marker from Nicole at Fairy Realm Yarns, which she had popped in with an order I did last year. And um, so, yeah, I thought that would be a nice set. And so will that. So in order to win, I would like you to choose a set so uh, and use the words in which set you would like. So either Winter Flower or the Belle Claire yarn. So if you use those words in your comment or if you would like to be in the draw for both of them, use both those words if you understand because then when I do the comment picker, I'll search for the words Winter Flower and Belle Claire. And Belle Claire is how you spell it. B-E-L-C-L-A-R-E. So that's how you will enter. And um, I'll let that run for a while. Let it run for two weeks. So even if I do a little video next week, I'll, let the, I'll keep it open for two weeks. Okay. Good luck. Okay, friends, we've come back outside. It's about 10 past four. The sun's starting to go down, but definitely lighter now than it has been for quite some time. And uh, so Sheppy and I would like to say, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us for this video. Can you hear the great tit in there? Teacher, 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 teacher. It's in, whoop. Can't see it that way. It's over there in the wee wood. Teacher, teacher, teacher. Anyway. Anyways, it's over there in the wee wood. The stream is babbling away. I don't know if that'll pick back up for you either. I realize I'm looking in the wrong place for the camera. So if I haven't been looking at you, I'm sorry. Um, so take care, friends. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope 2022 has been okay for you so far. And if it's not, if it hasn't been, may it get better. We're thinking about you, friends. Take care. Be well. Be safe. With love and sunshine from Wild Cottage in Ireland.